have to come together around the Word of God concerning the subject of healing. And Father, we thank you that as we minister the Word of God, that the power and the anointing and the healing uh, virtue will flow. And Lord, those watching online, those that are here presently in the, in the room, that the result will be complete and total victory in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. So we want to go to Matthew chapter 8 is where we're going to begin. And uh, especially for this beginning class, I, I, I will say, and something that I say all the time concerning healing schools, that one, one session builds on the next session, and, and the next session builds on the next session. And I realize that, that we all have lives, we have things that we need to do. Uh, but I feel that it's very important if I'm going to walk in health. Uh, and if, if you're here or online looking uh, for healing, uh, it's very important that, that I'm under the word, if not in the, the, the room, if not in the auditorium, watching online, listening, because... Uh, you know, very often we say faith comes by hearing, but the Bible says, uh, just as importantly to me, in the book of Proverbs, that the Word of God is medicine to my flesh. And if the Word of God is medicine to my flesh, then I want to take my medicine and uh, receive healing. Amen? And so we want to begin with this subject of God's will being healing, or God's will is healing. We have been doing uh, healing school now for, uh, quite honestly, I don't know how many years. Uh, I know the last five years in uh, DeSoto, uh, and for some years before that, we took a small break, and then for some years before that. But uh, God's will is healing. Brother Hagen said something one time. He said, when you know that by his stripes you are healed, and you know that in your spirit, when you know that by his stripes you are healed and you know that in your spirit, and he said, just like you know two plus two is four in your head, uh, the, he said the devil won't have any authority over you in that situation anymore. Uh, because the way to know in your spirit, again, he went on to say the way to know in your spirit is by meditating on it by meditating on what the Word of God had to say. You meditated on it with your mind until it filters down in your spirit, and then you'll be certain and sure. All right. But I think the, the thing that struck me about that is how very often, how many times he said, when you know, when you know that by his stripes you are healed, and you know that in your spirit. When you know it, and you know it in your spirit. Uh, I won't take a lot of time on, on some of these uh, rabbit trails, if you will. But, you know, it's one thing to say, I know God can heal. It's another to say, I know God uh, has the power to heal. I have to know, and that's why we're going to talk on this for the next few weeks. I have to know that it is God's will, and it's God's will every time. It's God's will, and it's God's will every time to heal me, to heal my family members, to heal anyone who's looking for healing. And even though we may have attended churches and we may have attended meetings where that has been taught, uh, I still have to meditate on that and let that filter down into my spirit. Now, faith can only and only begins where the will of God is known. The only place that faith can begin and the only place faith does begin is where the will of God is known. F.F. Uh, F. Bosworth said in his book, Christ the Healer, he said his promises are each a revelation of what God is eager to do for us. His promises are each a revelation of what God is eager to do for us. And he went on and said, until we know what God's will is, there's nothing to base our faith on. So that's why we say faith begins where the will of God is known. 
because each promise is a revelation of what God's eager to do for us. When a person was born again, when you were born again, uh, whether you were in church or at a meeting or on the, on the street, I don't know, but somebody said something to you that showed you that it was God's will to, heal, to, to save you, that God loved you, that God cared about you. And the result of that was you put your faith in what God said, and the result was you were healed, or you were saved, excuse me. The same process, it's the same way with healing. I hear what the Word of God says about my healing. I put my faith in what He said, and the result will be healing. Hallelujah. So I've got to recognize healing is God's will. And I've got to recognize that it's the enemy that's trying to make me sick. Uh, and I need to resist that. Brother Hagin said this. He said, if you, you resist anything of the devil and you're resisting the devil. You resist anything that's from the devil and you're resisting the devil. Hallelujah. Now, the reason, one reason this is so important to know God's will is healing is that is how I'm going to hang on to it is I know that it's God's will. Uh, a man ministered by the name of P.C. Nelson, he said, more people lose their healing over a counterattack than anything else. Because, because uh, there are times the enemy will try to come back with that same thing again. But I have to hold on to what God said in his word. I'm healed regardless of if there's a counterattack. But over the years, personally, I've seen people before, they would say, well, I thought I, I thought I was healed. What happened? Well, nothing happened. You were healed, and you still are healed. It's, it's the enemy that has made this attempt to run this counterattack, and if I hold on to the Word of God, if I maintain my stance that this is the will of God for my life is to be healed, eventually I will gain the victory. Amen. So, it's impossible for us to believe God for something that we're not sure he desires to do. I've got to know that God desires to heal me, that God desires to uh, make me whole every time. It's not, it's not hit or miss. You know, sometimes I think, I think even in the church we still, we still have this issue of uh, where people are kind of left with the idea, well, you can come up here and we'll lay hands on you, but you might get healed or you might not. And we may not say those words, but very often, especially in faith circles, and I've been guilty of it, but we'll, we'll preach on faith and we'll, 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 we'll talk about what God can do and then we'll say, but it's according to the measure of your faith. And it is, I mean, we've got to be able to believe God. But here's the thing, is if I major on what God's will is for people, then they're going to have strong faith in what God's will is. Amen. And so God has always had a hand in delivering people from sickness and disease. He's never had a hand in causing sickness and disease. Now, why is that important? Because that shows us His will. If God's never caused it, it's not His will. And if you ask anybody that is spirit-filled, that has a knowledge of the Word of God, has God ever made anyone sick? No, God's never made anyone sick. He doesn't have any sickness. Then you cannot say that it's ever God's will for someone not to be healed because it's always His will. So Matthew chapter 8 is where we want to begin. We'll begin in verse 1. And it says, When He, meaning Jesus, was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed Him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you will, notice that phrase, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, notice, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Now, obviously, leprosy at this time was a very horrible disease. Uh, it affected the sufferers physically. It caused them to be separated from society, from their loved ones. And lepers were considered unclean. They were hard to look at because of their disfigurements. And leprosy, in short, was, in, in this day and age especially, was a death sentence. And this man came to Jesus with a statement. Notice, if you will, meaning if it's your will, or if you choose to, 
or if you're so inclined, you can or you're able or it's possible for you to make me clean. So he came and said, if you will, if it's your will, if you choose to, you can make me clean. Now, the obvious thing here is the man never questioned Jesus' ability. And even in a church that maybe is not prone to believe that God heals every time, they will never question God's ability to heal. They won't question His ability to heal because they believe God can do anything, just like we do. So they won't question God's ability to heal, but they will say this, it may not be His will. You know, in, in other words, if you get hands laid on you and you didn't instantaneously get healed, well, brother, it must not have been God's will. Well, except that's not scripturally sound. So this man said, if you will, you can. So the question then that arose, if you will, was there because of a lack of knowledge on his part about Jesus. What Jesus was willing to do. What Jesus desired to do. Well, Jesus was the Word, so the question arose because of a lack of knowledge about the Word. What is, what is in the Word? What has God promised me in the Word? See, my knowledge of the Word will determine what I believe God's will is. The knowledge of the word that I have determines what I believe God's will is. I remember one time somebody told me something about uh, a situation I was going through. I was just a, a young, young man, young Christian, younger, I should say, still young, but younger. And uh, in any event, uh, this person told me, they said, well, now you listen to me. They said, uh, if God has to, he'll... He'll wrap you around a telephone pole to get your attention. And he would rather you serve him from a wheelchair or from a bed than, than uh, you know, than to, to not serve him. Well, that was a distorted knowledge that they had of God. All right? God's not obviously wrapping people around telephone poles. He's not paralyzing anybody so they'll serve him. Uh my knowledge of the Word determines what I believe God's will is. Or what I believe God's will is not. So I have to firmly settle it in my mind. God's will is healing. Every time. God's will is not sickness. It's not disease. All right, you, there's, there's things that we as believers have to settle. And the first thing is that God is only good. He has no bad to ever give anyone. Uh, the Bible says there's no evil in him, no darkness in him, no hate in him. He is good. He is light. He is love. We settle that. And, and here's why. Because the first thing the enemy will try to do if you're battling a sickness is try to come along and point out where you've missed it. And because you've missed it somewhere, now God's letting you suffer with this. Well, that's, can people be sick because of somewhere they've missed it? Yes, but that's not, that, you can't just take that as a, as a carte blanche rule, if you will, and apply it to every situation. Because there are people watching online, maybe people in here today, you're facing a challenge in your health, and it's not because you did anything wrong. It's because you live in an earth with the curse on it, and the curse is trying to encroach on your body. It's not because you did anything wrong. It's not because you don't have enough faith. You know, if, if we want to use that as an example, there were people that worked with the Apostle Paul that, that almost died because they got so sick, and they were Paul's right-hand man, and they almost died because they got so sick. And Paul said he would have died, but the Lord showed him mercy. So God wasn't behind the sickness. God was behind 
the healing. See, it's, it's, it's what I believe about what God's will is. So if, if I know God's will is healing and I seem to be challenged with something or it seems to be prolonged or it seems to be hanging in there, then I need to go maybe and say, now, Lord, where am I missing it? What, what, do, I, what do I need to give my attention to? Because I know what your will is and your will is to heal me. See, this man didn't know what his will was. He had heard about what Jesus could do because he said, I know you're able. I know you can, if you will. So evidently he had seen it. He had heard about it. He knew about it. Amen. You know, I grew up, I grew up uh, on a steady diet of the voice of healing ministers. I mean, that, that was big in my home. My dad was healed during the days of the voice of healing. And, but there still came a time in my life when I had to determine Okay, God healed all those people, but I believe it's God's will to heal me. And once I believed it was God's will to heal me, then that's when I could walk in it. Now notice here, in verse 3 of the same chapter, he says, Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean, and immediately his leprosy was cleansed. So Jesus not only told the man he would heal him, he showed the man how much he wanted to heal him, and he reached out his hand and touched him. I will be clean. Reached forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. The words, I will, I will, it is my will. Show his compassion and grace. I will, I want to do this. Uh, one translation, the Weiss translation says, Jesus said it this way, I am desiring this with all my heart. I desire this with everything that's in me. But then he said the words, be clean. They were filled with creative power and authority. He not only has the desire to heal us, he has the creative power and ability to do what he desires. It's one thing to desire something and not be able to do it. It's another thing altogether to be able to do what you desire. So Jesus not only can heal, he desires to heal. And he not only desires to heal, he has the ability to do it. Hallelujah. So in order to access the power of God, I must not only believe that God can, but that God wants to. I have to be able to believe that he can, but I have to believe that he wants to. Very familiar scripture. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, without, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. <coughs> believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder. So we could say it this way. Believe that he can heal and believe that he will heal. That's, that's faith in its essence. And he said, through the writer of Hebrews, believe that God is. But then he used the word and. So what's that tell us? Believing God is, is not enough in any aspect of redemption. Must believe, that's part of it, you must believe that God is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. If when a person comes for salvation, believing that God is, isn't enough to save them. Well, I, you know, I believe there's a God. Well, they haven't said that much. The Bible says the devils believe there's a God and they tremble. <laughs> you, you understand? You have to believe God wants to save you. I believe God wants to save me. And that's when a person is ready to be born again. It's not enough to know God can heal you. I got to know God wants to heal me. I have to be solidly assured of it from the word of God. I have to know it again. Like two plus two is four. I know that in my mind. You don't even have to think about that. If somebody says, what's two plus two? Four. 
What's one plus one? Two. I mean, uh, those are very simple things that we all begin to learn probably before kindergarten, probably before preschool at home with mom. You know, mom taught me two plus two or one plus one. But here's the point. I know that beyond the shadow of doubt. You cannot convince me that two plus two is five. It just doesn't add up. There's no way. You can't take two plus two and get five. I mean, you can say it's five, but, but it's wrong because the equation doesn't work. Two plus two cannot equal five. I have to know that it is God's will to heal me in my spirit like I know two plus two is four. Any other equation doesn't make sense. For it not to be God's will to heal, just it, it has to get to a place in your mind and in your spirit where that just doesn't make sense. That God wouldn't want to heal me. Why would God not want to heal me? I mean, if you ever run into anybody that says, well, it's not always God's will to heal, ask them, why is it not always God's will to heal? And they'll just look at you like that. Because they don't know why they believe it's not always God's will to heal. I remember my father uh, telling the story when he was a, a, a young boy. And uh, he was born with uh, different maladies. And in any way, uh, there for a while, couldn't walk and, and, and had braces. And, and they were, he was raised in a particular denomination that did not necessarily believe in healing. And uh, they would take him to the church, and uh, they would pray for him. And they always prayed this way. Now, Lord, if it be your will, heal this young man. And he said one night he remembered uh, the pastor. They brought him up to pray. And, and of course, they believed in anointing with oil and, and, you know, all that. But the pastor prayed and said, Lord, if it be your will, heal this young boy. And then he said, he kind of turned his head and thought I couldn't hear him. He said, and if not, just go ahead and take him out of his suffering. See, so it's, 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 if it be your will, well, why is it not his will? Why would we add the if there? Why, why would I say if, if, if uh, uh, any of you all, Miss Gloria, Vernon, uh, Marianne, any, any of you all in this room watching online, if you came to me today after healing school and you said, uh, uh, you know, now tomorrow I'm going to bring such and such by the church for you. I'm going to bring you an apple pie. Now, I don't eat apple pie, but that sounds, that's a good illustration. I'm going to bring you an apple pie, all right? And then I looked at you and said, well, if it's your will. Well, you just told me your will. You told me you wanted to bring me a, a pie. And then I say, well, if it's your will. That would kind of make you not do anything. Because I don't, I don't know if it's your will. Amen. Because what I would have to say is, now Vernon said he was going to bring this pie by, but I don't know if it's his will. If it's his will, it'll come to pass, and if not, it won't. Well, now that may seem like an oversimplification, but when you ask someone, why is it not God's will? Why is it not God's will to heal every time? They'll say things like, well, there's just too many variables. Variables of what? Jesus said that if I would believe the word of God, all things were possible. Never one time in the ministry of Jesus in the four gospels, never once, and he was the will of God in action for all people for all time. Never one time do you see him tell anybody, it's not my will to heal you. He never said it. He never said it. And, and, and G everybody that Jesus healed was not even born again. They weren't even filled with the Holy Spirit. They, Jesus healed everybody that came to him under the old covenant based on provision out of the old covenant. Well, you and I live under a new and a better covenant according to the, to, to the word of God. If that's the case, then I should be even more sure of the will of God than those people that lived in Jesus' day. Amen. He never told anybody, no, 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 you, you haven't suffered with that enough. You know, you suffer a little while longer and, we'll, and then we'll think about it. No. He healed every person according to the, 
Man, you're a blessed man, I'm telling you. See? I know that's right. But every person that came to him, we see him healed. We see multitudes healed that touched his garment. Multitudes healed with the power of his word. Now, I'm belaboring that because when someone says, well, you know, it's not always God's will to heal. Why? Why is it not always God's will to heal? I can take you to scripture after scripture that show it's always God's will to heal, but I've never found one that says it's not God's will to heal. Ever. Not, not one, not half a scripture, not a quarter of a scripture. Because it's always His will. Now notice here in John chapter 9. John chapter 9. And uh, verse 1, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. So this man had been blind his whole life. And his disciples asked him, Master, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now look. Look at this. We're going to read some more of this, but note, look at this. They are immediately falling back on what their religious ideas taught them. When, if you remember the story when Jesus healed the man, that they opened the roof and let him down in the, in the, in the middle of the house. When Jesus saw him, it says when, the Bible says when Jesus saw the man, the first thing he said was, son, your sins are forgiven you. He didn't say be healed. He said your sins are forgiven you. Immediately, those religious leaders in the, in the room begin to say, well, this man speaks blasphemies. Who can forgive sins but God only? And Jesus said, why do you reason this in your hearts? Whether it's easier to say, for uh, 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 rise, take up your bed and walk, or your sins are forgiven you. He said, but that you will know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, rise, take up your bed and walk, and he did. Well, here's the reason that was a problem for them. The reason why this was a problem for the disciples. The Jewish people believed, and still do by and large, that if you were sick, it was the result of sin. They, they believed that if this man was born blind, somebody sinned. His parents or him. I don't know how he could have sinned. He wasn't born yet. But that's what they believed. All right? So notice something. He said, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, notice, neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be manifest in him. Now, we're going to read some more of this, but religion has taught for a number of years. They will not say that God made this man blind, but they'll say God allowed him to be born blind so that Jesus could heal him. Well, we know clearly from the Word, God doesn't cause blindness. It says He opens the blinded eyes. I read it today from Isaiah over the healing list scriptures that I go over, try to go over them every day. It said, you make the blind eyes to see and the deaf ears to hear. Uh, the book of Proverbs says, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, you have made both of them. So, He doesn't bring blindness, He brings sight. So he wasn't caused to be born blind by God so that Jesus could heal him. The, the bottom line truth is some sicknesses come on people because sickness is common to humankind. It's that we live in an earth with the curse on it. And that's why we have to build our faith in what the Word of God said. 
But some sicknesses come on people. Why was this man born blind? He was born into an earth with blindness in it. He, the, the, the curse came on him. I mean, it's just that simple. Now, for religious-minded people, that's not, that's, not, that's not deep enough. That's too simple. You know, there had to be an underlying reason. But here's the problem. You read the entire chapter of John chapter 9, and it's never revealed to us what the underlying reason was. If, if God had made this man blind, surely somewhere here we would have seen, and God had a purpose in this, and God had a plan for it, and now look, son, I'm going to heal you. Yes, God made you blind, but now I'm going to heal you. So now we have Jesus taking things off people that God put on them. Now the Father and the Son are working against each other. That's impossible. Because Jesus said, I only do the works of him that sent me. And, and here's the thing. Now, I'm, I know this may be elementary, and you may have heard this before, but I'm, I'm, we're building our case for the will of God. If he only did the works of him that sent him, we never see Jesus making anybody sick, making anybody blind. And he said, I only do the works of him that sent me. Hallelujah. The Greek verb here that says that the works of God should be manifest in him, the, the Greek verb suggests a future result, not the reason for the blindness. All right? So it's not saying God was the reason for the blindness. It's saying this is pointing to a future result. The mercy that was shown to this man was far more important than the cause of the disease. I mean, at the end of the day, why did this come on this person? I don't know, but God took it off of him. See, we are on the side of God. We're on the side of goodness. Why, why did this happen? That person got unforgiveness in their life? Are they sinning? I don't know. I don't know why it came. I don't know what door they opened, but here's what I do know. God healed them. I mean, that, that's, that's the end result. Sometimes we can be so determined to find out why something happened, we miss getting the victory over it. And, and there are doors, again, that can open, but everybody that you know is not sick because of unforgiveness. Everybody that you know is not sick because of sin. Are there people that are sick because of sin? Yes. Are there people that are sick because of unforgiveness? Yes. But there are people that are sick because they work too hard. There are people that are sick because they didn't take care of themselves. There are people that are sick for any number of reasons. Here's the point. No matter what the reason is, God said, I'll take it off of you. That, that's what we focus on. We focus on what God said about what he wanted to do for us. Now notice, Jesus said that the works of God should be made manifest in him. The works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, for the night cometh when no man can work. So notice he's talking about the works of God are going to be made manifest in this man. So what does that tell you? Up until that point, they have not been manifest in him. Because they're going to be. Then he says, verse 6, When he thus spoken, he spat on the ground, made clay of the spittle. And when he had anointed or spread the clay on the eyes of the blind man, he said, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is being by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and notice, and came seeing. Well, notice the work that was worked in him. Sight. Healing. Blindness left. Well, just keep that in your spirit and see that Jesus said the works of God were going to be made manifest in him and that he must work the works of him that sent him. Then he 
laid hands on this man and told him to go wash, he washed and came forth seeing. He didn't go wash and it was worse. He didn't go wash and it got a little bit better. Jesus laid hands on another man after spitting in his eyes too and said, now what do you see? He said, I see men as trees walking. Jesus said, let's pray again. He just prayed again till the man got healed. He didn't leave him there. So what does that tell us? Sometimes healing's by degrees, but it's always God's will to fulfill it, to complete it. I may not be as well today as I'm going to be next week, but the healing power is flowing in my body right now, and I'm going to be completely 100% whole because that's the will of God. So Jesus said the works of God were going to be manifest in this man. Hallelujah. I must work the works of him that sent me. So Jesus was doing the works of the Father who sent him. See, God's will is always healing. And look over here in Mark chapter 5. This is a familiar verse. And uh, verse 25, certain woman that had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and was nothing bettered but rather grew worse when she'd heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment. Why? For she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole. Well, here's the thing. What made her think that if she touched his clothes, she could be whole. Well, obviously, she had heard of Jesus. She had maybe seen some miracles or heard about miracles. But here's the point. This shows she understood a willingness to heal. That, that's why she was willing to press through the crowd and touch his garment. And notice, when she touched Jesus' garment, she felt she was healed of the plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And he looked round about 32 to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing, trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of your plague. See, he's working the works. Of the father. He, he was not even cognizant that this woman was anywhere in the vicinity. But the moment she touched him with the touch of faith, that power leapt out of his body and completely healed her. Th these are the works of the father. If, if healing was not God's will, then this woman was accidentally healed. No, it was God's will because we see it in other places where everybody that touched him, the Bible says, was made whole. Everybody. It says he went and he, and he taught and the multitudes came. And it says as many as touched him were made whole. There were other times he was ministering to multitudes. And if I can take the time to, to say this real quick. Sometimes I think people don't understand the, maybe the magnitude of Jesus' ministry. I mean... When the Greek uses the words multitude, here's what it basically means. An innumerable amount. They couldn't, they couldn't count the people. There were so many people they couldn't count them. I mean, just, and the Bible says when Jesus went places that multitudes came to him, bringing their sick. And I mean, multitudes. Mul you couldn't number them. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. And it says, as many as touched him were made whole. In one place, it talks about a multitude, and it says, he healed them all. All of them. Everybody got healed. When he went, when you look in the, in the book of Luke chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, it tells us the story about Jesus uh, leaving the synagogue, and he went to Peter's mother-in-law's home, and she was sick with a fever. And it says that Jesus healed her. And Charles Capps always said that's why Peter denied Jesus, because he healed his mother-in-law. I, 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 don't, I, don't, 
Uh, Charles Cap said that. I didn't say that. But in any event, uh, the point is, <laughs> the, the point is, then it says that they heard Jesus was in the house and that they went and got all the sick in the city, all the sick, and brought them to him. And one, one, one of the gospels says, Jesus stood in that doorway and laid hands on people from sundown to sunup. And it says, he healed them all. And then it says those that were demon-possessed were delivered. Here's my point in going through all those stories. If it wasn't the will of God to always heal everybody every time, surely somebody in those multitudes wouldn't have gotten healed. But Jesus said, the, the Bible says, he healed them all. And people are very quick to bring out the one verse. And they say, well, Jesus didn't get everybody healed because, because look, you know, uh, he could do no mighty works there because of their unbelief. But he it wasn't for his lack of trying. It wasn't because he didn't want to heal them. It was because they were offended at him. It was because they did not exercise any faith in him. He wanted to heal them. It says he laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them. And people have taught over the years that that was just people with minor ailments. But the Greek word for that, that word sick, it's, it's, it's akin to the word mega. These were sick, sick, sick people. They were paralyzed. They, could, they were at the brink of death. They were, he laid his hands on a few of the worst cases, and they were healed. He wanted to heal people. He wanted to heal people everywhere he went. But the only group that didn't receive, and we have Bible verification, was that group that said, who does he think he is? And it said he marveled at their unbelief. And then he just went down the road, started teaching, and it says he went around in the synagogues teaching and preaching and healing. Just went a few miles down the road, and a multitude was healed. I mean, Jesus, Jesus wanted to heal so, so badly that he raised people from the dead. It was always, always his will, is always his will. Every time, and I'm going to be closing in just a moment, every time that you come into a church where the word of God is preached and where healing is believed, there's the potential for you to walk out with your miracle. Every time. Why? Because it's always God's will to heal. Always, it's always God's will to heal. And, and uh, Jesus was doing the works of the Father that sent him. We have to do the works of the Father that sent us. So that's why we believe it's always God's will to heal. Healing is now and always has been the will of God and always will be. And I've got to just keep that in my mind that it's always God's will to heal. And let me, let me close with this. Oh, you know, over the years in doing healing school and, and especially functioning uh, in this to some extent, the, the level that the Lord's allowed us to, to function in this anointing, uh, I've seen this over the years. I had a lady come to me one time, and uh, she wanted to talk to me and had come to the office, and uh, she said, uh, well, I, I want to talk to you because I need healing in my body. I said, okay, and she came and was talking to me, and she had a, a certain type of uh, cancer in her blood, and I, d I don't remember exactly what it was, but uh, I remember she sat there, and she looked at me, and she said, uh, uh, well, you know, God should heal me, and I s and." Finally, I looked at her. She had said that a few times, and finally I looked at her and said, Well, dear sister, I said, tell me why God should heal you. And she said, because I'm a good person. And I said, okay, well, why do you say that? Well, I keep the Ten Commandments. Well, I, I recognized right away there was a, a, a biblical ignorance there. But I told her, I said, God is not going to heal you because you're a good person. There are a lot of good people today that are dying. And they're good people. 
I mean, uh, this, is, this is part of healing that very often people miss. It is not basing God's desire to heal me on anything I've done. All right, because, because whatever it is, if, if, if you believe perhaps that if you just confess enough scripture, somehow God will heal you, you're missing it. Because what you're doing is you're putting your faith in the confession of the scripture instead of putting your faith in the God of the scripture. That, that's what I've got to do. I've got to, I've had people say, you know, there was one lady that, that called a ministry one time and said, uh, uh, you know, that she had been mugged. And she was a partner of that ministry. She said, I've been mugged. And I just don't understand why God would allow this. And how come I quote the 91st Psalm. And finally the minister on the phone said, uh, well, sister, you know, uh, did you have a reason for being down there? Well, no, not really. And, and you know, I really had a check in my spirit about going. Well, see, you can't confess the 91st Psalm when you got a leading in your spirit not to go. Just can't do that. Now, the reason I'm saying this, I confess scriptures of healing over my body because I believe it's God's will to heal me. Not because I believe the confession of scripture is going to get God to do something. That's where people miss it. We need to confess scripture, but why do you confess scripture? Because the word is medicine to me. And he said that when I take his word and ingest it, it will heal my body. But I'm not confessing to try to get God to do something. It is God's will plainly in the scripture to heal me. And so I'm confessing the scripture because I believe it's God's will. And that's why you go through the scripture and you say, now, Lord, I see right here in Isaiah 53 and 5, with your stripes, I'm healed. Now, I believe that. I believe that. And I just quote that over my body. The, 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 the spirit life of Isaiah 53 and 5 is flowing through my body in the name of Jesus. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24 is flowing through my bloodstream. The spirit life of 1 Peter 2, 24 is flowing through my bloodstream. It's ridding my bloodstream of all infection. It's ridding my bloodstream of all bacteria. It's ridding my bloodstream of all sickness and disease and germs and viruses right now in the name of Jesus. And, that, and that's why you'll see people. They'll even pick up the books. You know, God created power for healing. And, and, and they'll quote it and they'll say it. But here's the point. If I don't believe distinctly that it's God's will to heal me, then that's just a positive confession. It's not a confession of what I believe. Confession by, by, by definition means to say the same thing as, the same thing as God, the same thing as what the Word of God says. So as we're preparing to leave today, I'm going to pray over everyone here and, and over those watching. But the thing to remember is that it is always God's will to heal me. It's God's will to heal me now. And when, when I pray over you, God's going to touch your body. It's just how it is. That's what's going to happen. And uh, within the next two weeks, we'll be laying hands on everyone as we go through the word and do a little more. But I believe God. Amen. Let me pray for you before we, we leave today. Father, I thank you for every person that has come to healing school today. I thank you for every person that is watching online. Father, I thank you for those that are watching from, from Texas, those that are watching from Kansas. I thank you for those that are watching, Lord, uh, uh, in hospitals. I thank you that you're touching their body right now in the name of Jesus as they begin to confess and declare that the will of God for their life is healing. Father, I pray over every person present in this auditorium in the name of Jesus. Father, as this healing anointing is flowing through my spirit, I just declare over them in the name of Jesus that they are the healed of the Lord, that every sickness, disease, germ, virus, bacteria must leave their bodies, every infection. Father, every challenge to respiratory systems, every challenge, Father, to the bloodstream, I declare in the name of Jesus that you must go, you must be well, you must be healed in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus for doing what you said you would do. I thank you that your word is life to us. 
and it provides sustenance to our spirit. And we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, we will be here every Thursday at 1.30 for Healing School, and God's going to do some great things. Amen. So until we see you then, especially those of you online, God bless you. Thank you for being with us. And until that time, remember, build your faith and frame your world by the word of God. God bless you.